Hello and welcome to a new series I'll be producing called Town Car vs. Town Car, comparing town cars by I Like Town Cars, that would be me. My ethos in trying to make this series would be the fact that I have driven about over 50,000 miles in the last uh, seven years in Lincoln Town Cars and my Grand Marquis, but obviously I favor the town car. And in this episode, I'd like to discuss what I will call the safety feel of driving town cars. Now, the context of this would be the fact that driving sucks, and other drivers suck, especially since uh, something called the pandemic of 2020. The New York Times, I think, noticed it as well. Just people are driving a lot worse than they used to, and I regularly uh, drive my Lincolns up and down the interstates. Worst time has got to be like during rush hour, um, and I've definitely noticed, especially compared to um, in the last decade, just people seem to be driving a lot angrier than they used to. You'll get people trying to take out their anger and frustrations on other drivers, just totally misdirecting and acting out in ways they shouldn't be against totally innocent or otherwise undeserving individuals, innocent bystanders. It's just staggering the amount of incidents I've encountered where people just try to run me off the road or cut me off for, or park in my blind spot and prevent me from merging or making a lane change. I might do everything right. I might have my signal on and they will deliberately just go get in my blind spot because they want me to hit them. They want to claim that some sort of collision happened they want to then force a settlement or whatever whatever is going on in their heads that makes them think that they can stage an accident and then blame me for it and get a payday. It doesn't work that way, but they still think it can, and so they try to do. I'll explain why I'm happy to be in a Lincoln Town car when this is the sort of thing I have to deal with. So, structure. Body and frame town cars have, and all Panther cars, have the traditional conventional construction. Both the body and the frame are strong. They're designed to be strong. They can put up with a lot. They can tank minor damage. Small defects, even impacts the rest of the car generally survives. What's got to mainly be worried about, mind you, this can apply to any car, but with town cars especially, have they haven't they've been out of production for over 13 years. When choosing a town car to be your car, you do want to pick one that has not been exposed to the elements excessively corrosion rust that sort of thing if it's bad enough the structural integrity of the town car will suffer now none of my cars are suffering to, to that extent all of my cars are pretty solid even my 99 which looks rusty is not as a matter of fact rusty now all of them the year, make, the year and model of the vehicle does not necessarily mean it's going to be worse than the other. You can encounter well-preserved, garaged, first-gen town cars that might be stronger in that sense than, say, a rusty, rustier third-gen, but it's going to come down to the individual vehicle. I'm not going to really, really give this point to either generation either way. Uh, where that difference comes in, it would be the features, airbags, ABS, track control, control, that sort of thing. The newer cars just win hands down. Those sorts of features just did not exist on the older cars, and there's no sense in trying to retrofit them into the older cars. Just No one does that, and no one will do that. So definitely, for features, the newer cars win. These sorts of things show up in the 90s by the... Late 90s and 2000s, it's pretty standard. And then for defense, you know, I'll borrow this from the motorcycling world. Um, yeah, having power is good because sometimes you got to get yourself out of trouble. And I hate to say it, but there's a lot of trouble on the road, and I have had to get myself out of trouble plenty of times in the town cars. Now, as far as power goes, um, any of them can accelerate. They all have V8s. They've all got the torque. And it's essential then that the vehicle is running properly. A, neglect, a neglected car won't have the power that a optimized town car should be able to give you. At this point, 
each of my town cars is able to give me adequate power to get out of trouble. I mean, yeah, I know by the by the late two, especially by the end of the run, town car is a very underpowered vehicle, but the torque is still there, the acceleration is still there. Town car can get you out of trouble. I have full faith and confidence in the town car's ability to do that. Maneuverability and stopping power does improve over the years, um, especially with the second and third gens with the better brakes and better suspension and steering, especially the third gen with the rack and pinion. Those cars should be able to handle better than the earlier vehicles, but there are upgrades that can be done to the older vehicles to get them safer in regards to the maneuverability of the car, such as putting the heavy-duty shocks on first gen that or just making sure it has shocks at all. A lot of them, if they've been left neglected since the 1980s, they're running on dead factory shocks, and you do a balance test, that thing's going to keep bouncing. It doesn't really matter what type of shock it is if it is a dead shock. So you don't want that. Just Again, just make sure your car is optimized and safe, and you'll be able to drive defensively in a town car. Last point I'd say is cost. Uh, cost to repair a town car is pretty cheap. Cost to replace a town car is very cheap. Insurance is also quite cheap. Um, as far as sentiments go, um, it just I think it's pretty obvious that the second and third gens, just by virtue of there still being more of them, they are easier to replace. And with the parts availability, they're easier to repair. So if there's any sentimentality aspect going on, favor beating on a third gen, I'd say, because there are more of them. With first gens, the ones that are left, they have survived, and the perfect world, I would not want to beat on one of them, because if something happens to them there, and you want it to be a certain way, it is going to wind up being more difficult to keep it that way if it's at risk of getting crunched or hit by other drivers or even your own mistakes. Uh, as far as that cost goes, the third gen definitely wins. So, in summary, I'd happily drive any town car to get where I need to go and feel safe doing so. I'd prefer driving a third gen town car in and out of risky situations. And again, this just comes from my experience. You don't have to believe me or listen to anything I say, and that's fine. Hope this video was interesting, thanks for watching, and I'll try to fill out this table with any more interesting ideas of mine.